Hey, welcome back to my channel. We are talking all about traveling with babies and children. And today we're focusing on time zones. So stick around because I'm gonna to explain to you the tips for getting through the change of time zones. So on the way there, when you come back, how you can manage them whilst you're away, all about the time today. So are you ready? Because we are gonna delve on in. Okay, so the number one tip I wanna give you about time zones when it comes to traveling with little ones is consider the travel day, first of all, as an opportunity to transition. So whether you are taking a night flight or you're driving all day long, that day is gonna be a little out of routine. It's gonna be a little different to the norm. Naps may or may not happen at the same time as they normally would, and the bedtime might shift. It's a, it's just an odd day, right? It's not gonna be the same as normal. So use that as an opportunity if you are traveling to a different time zone, use that as an opportunity to get adjusted. And it's just almost like it's a blank canvas then. The second thing I wanna share with you is when you arrive. When you arrive, get onto local time. I don't care if it's one hour difference or five hours difference, get onto local time straight away. And that means start getting your body into the rhythm of the day where you are. So your meal times fall at that time in the new time zone, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Your bedtime is at the time on the new time zone straight away. None of this, oh wow, I know it's this time, but for me, to body clock feels like this time, or you're thinking about your child, or but they must feel like it's this time. Don't think like that. That's psychologically gonna hinder the adjustment. And this goes as much for adults as it does for children. But with children, you you need to use the subliminal messages of the environment and the routine um, to help their body clock to shift into gear into the new time zone. It may not be perfect, but it will certainly help. So meal times, bedtime routine, the light itself, the sun rising and setting are all also going to aid the signals to the body clock to go, oh, okay, hold on. Yes, it does feel more like lunchtime now, actually. <laughs> and that will help. And then the third thing to understand with this is actually about the return when you come back home. So when you get home, you've got the same thing. You need to switch back to local time straight away. No, like, oh yeah, but I feel like it's tea time and it's actually only just the morning. Yep, yeah, sure, you might feel that way, but have have breakfast if it's the morning, have lunch in the middle of the day, go to bed at the right time. You may have to do a little manipulation with little ones with naps. You might want to go, okay, do you know what? We're, we're gonna skip a nap today because we need to get the bedtime back on track. Or you might say, oh, we need to add in a nap today so that I can keep my child um, in a good place and, and get bedtime at the right time at home. Whatever you need to do, especially on that first day back, whatever you need to do to get back into your local time and rhythm as soon as possible. It's all about rhythmicity at the end of the day and our body clocks and circadian rhythms are a natural thing. But when we shift from time zones, rather than letting nature take its course over maybe a week or more, we can actually get there quicker by helping with all these triggers and cues around us and rhythm to our day. Okay, so hopefully this will make your time zone travel a lot um, quicker it can take up to a week to overcome jet lag, especially if it's quite a big difference. And especially when you go um, from west to east, it feels worse, so that's worth knowing as well. Okay, I hope these tips have helped. Share in the comments if you have anything to ask about the time zones, and I will see you in my next episode where I'm gonna be talking about sleep tips for your children while you're away. So if you're on a vacation or a holiday and you've taken some time out to travel, some tips for sleeping when traveling. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag the sleep nanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.